This is Dan Bao Yang Yu, or Egg Wrap Potato. It's a classic street snack in Guizhou, consisting of slightly smashed potatoes, Napa cabbage, rice and rice noodle products, and a whole lot of flavor. Going to Guiyang, me and Steph would sometimes jokingly refer to this dish as Guizhou Amu Potato. There's always just something pseudo-Pavlovian hearing the clang 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 of the late night vendors whipping it up. That said, our all-time favorite Dan Bao Yang Yu vendor has to be a specific woman on Yuntong Jie, close to Guiyang 19th Middle School. Watching her and her husband work is just a thing of street food artistry. So, what we want to do here today is share our take on that Dan Bao Yang Yu. But because our version here is basically just a complete recreation of that vendor's, we figured we'd also share an uncut video of them whipping it up too, because she is awesome at this and you can also double check her work. Further, after testing, because this dish was honestly just so much fun to cook and play around with, we'll actually be doing two versions today. First, as close as we could possibly get it to that vendor. But second, and easier on the ingredient and equipment, Western Supermarket Club version as well. So that you have no excuse, but to at least try this absolutely awesome Guizhou street food. Now, there's going to be a number of components to this amu potato filling, so let's sort the Guizhou version first. So, obviously, the first thing you'll need here is some cooked potato. You could steam this, but we took the easy route and just nuked these on medium-high, covered for 12 minutes till soft. Also works just as well. Then, you'll also need a bit of cooked rice, the path of least resistance being whatever leftover rice you happen to have in your fridge, but if you don't happen to have any on hand, for this small amount, just nuke some rice. Two tablespoons jasmine, rinsed, filled up with water till it reaches your first knuckle, and nuked on medium for 15 minutes covered. And while we're usually not the biggest fans of microwaved rice texturally, for this dish it really doesn't matter, we mostly just want some starch. Then, for a similar reason, we've also got some rice noodles together with a bit of sweet potato noodles. Both will need an overnight soak, cold water for rice noodles and hot water for the sweet potato noodles. Then, after that 4 to 12 hour soak, what I like to do with these is dice them up at first. At the vendors, they obviously just chop these guys up on the flat top while cooking everything up, but because I'm palpably less talented with griddle scrapers than they are, I just find it a bit easier to cut them up beforehand. Either way, totally up to you. Then next, we've also got some hot dog, totally optional for the vegetarians in the room, about five leaves of Napa cabbage, all julienned, some pickled daikon, here we're using the pretty pink Guizhou kind, which we do have a video on, but feel free to use the Japanese, Korean, or Sichuan sort. And finally, the mandatory hard to source ingredient of the day, Yuxing Cao, aka fish wort. Now, Yuxing Cao is one of those love it or hate it ingredients. It's the root of the Hutinia cordata plant, and you might be able to find it in herb form at Vietnamese grocers by the name Supka. It's definitely not mandatory for this dish, but it is nice. Now, the root of cilantro is usually our go-to Yuxing Cao sub, but because I know that's also not exactly available at Walmart either, for our Western supermarket-friendly version, we'll just swap it completely for some chopped cilantro. Not the same, but it does hit the same notes. So, quick pause to let you scribble this all down, and not too bad to make this all Western supermarket-friendly. Instead of the sweet potato noodles, we'll just double up on the rice noodles, and the Vietnamese pho sort would also work totally great. For the Napa, even though I think a lot of supermarkets probably carry it nowadays, just in case, we'll swap that in for 60 grams of cabbage cabbage, tough cores removed and the rest julienne. For the pickles, we decided to give mincing up some gherkins a whirl, and honestly, it's actually pretty awesome, but it's decidedly the most dramatic substitute here, so definitely not all purpose or anything. And of course, we'll swap the aforementioned Yuxing Cao for the chopped cilantro. And again, I'll give you another quick pause to review those components. Now, for the seasoning then, there's two main things that she reaches for while cooking the potato. First, a seasoned chili powder, and second, a salty fermented sauce. Now, the seasoned chili powder is likely something that a vendor would just probably buy at the market, but it's also possible that they whipped it up themselves. If you're feeling ambitious, you can absolutely make something like this from scratch, which we covered how to do in our Guizhou Grill Pot video, but today let's just slap together a simplified version. To make it, just mix together a half tablespoon of chili powder, a half teaspoon salt, another half teaspoon MSG, and a quarter teaspoon each sugar and five spice powder. 
Mix well and set that aside. Then next, the sauce. Now, we were actually super obnoxious last time we were in Guiyang and annoyed that favorite vendor of ours if we could taste theirs. What they probably used was some tumaijiang fermented wheat paste from Sunyi, which is something unique to Guizhou, and then fried and watered it down. Now, I know, but don't panic. That paste is a really easy thing to sub here. For this dish, something like Cantonese ground bean paste would also work great, ditto with North Chinese huangjiang, and today we'll be calling for Japanese miso paste for ease of international replication. Either way, just fry your fermented paste of choice in with a bit of oil over medium-low flame, and once that's good and fragrant, about a minute, mix in a half teaspoon each salt and Sichuan peppercorn powder. Then just hit that with a quarter cup of water, bring it all up to a rapid boil, then shut off the heat and reserve. And then with that, your seasonings are also ready. Now, with all that sorted, we can finally fry up some potato, starting with the Guizhou version. To do this, you're going to need some sort of large cast iron skillet, like ours is 14 inches large, together with two griddle scrapers to chop everything up. So to fry this then, first heat your skillet up over a high flame, then swirl a couple tablespoons of oil and go in with your optional hot dog. Give that a quick 30 second fry or so, and then add in your starches, the sweet potato noodles, the rice noodles, and the cooked rice. Chop and fry those all together until roughly combined, about a half minute, then go in with your cooked potatoes. Combine and toss in the Napa cabbage. At this point then, thoroughly chop, 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 and incorporate everything all together. This step might take a bit longer, about a minute or two, and be sure to scrape all that tasty fond back into your potato mixture. Then toss in the seasoning that you whipped up before, and after a quick mix, also go in with two tablespoons of your liquid seasoning. Quick chop, 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 then go in with the pickled daikon and the yuxing sao, or your yuxing sao sub of choice. Quick mix, then go in with about 30 grams worth of chopped scallion. Another quick mix, and then this is ready to get wrapped in some egg. But before we do, let's circle back to that Western Supermarket Club version, just in case you don't happen to already own multiple griddle scrapers. So right, so alternatively, you can absolutely just fry this mix instead. Here we're using a wok, but you can also use your vessel of choice. The key though is to only add a thin smear of oil to let that fond still develop and also be quick to scrape it into the stir-fry. So, over a high flame, toss in your hot dogs, and after a quick fry, go in with the julienne cabbage. We're adding our cabbage cabbage a bit earlier this time because it does need a little longer to cook. Then after about a half minute, go in with your starches just like before, and after another quick mix, toss in the potato. At this point, break up the potatoes with your spatula, going at it kind of like we just went at it with the griddle scrapers, and definitely do make sure that you scrape up any fonda before it scorches. Then add in the dry seasoning, quick mix, wet seasoning, quick mix, pickles, quick mix, and finally the cilantro and scallion. Fry that all together for about 15 seconds, and out. And now this is ready to wrap in some eggs. Now, to wrap, at the vendors, what they'll generally do is just crack one egg and gently spread it over their skillet with their griddle scrapers. Unfortunately, our huge skillet is ever so slightly warped, which makes an even egg super difficult to achieve. So instead, what we'll do is crack three eggs, one and a half for each serving, and over a high flame heat up our, not warped, 8 inch cast iron skillet. Then add a thin layer of oil to the pan, and once it's hot enough to be bubbling around a pair of chopsticks, add in the eggs. Swirl to get a thin layer, then shut off the heat and cover. Wait for about one minute, then uncover, loosen up the omelet, and slide that over to a chopping board to roll, which I'll actually do inside to give myself a bit more room to maneuver. Just toss about half your filling onto the omelet, flip it up over the top, and carefully roll that all up. Slice in half, and then with that, you've got yourself an egg wrapped potato, as close as we could possibly make it to our favorite vendor in Guiyang. So I actually never uh, taste the Western Supermarket Friendly Club one. Uh, now let's give it a try. So the taste of this one, it's, um, it's definitely good, uh, but it's a little bit different than like the street food version in Guizhou, mostly because of the cabbage and the gherkin. Kind of like gives it that um, first general Chinese street food kind of taste and also somehow tastes a little bit like hamburgers 
So I think this being a street food item, it should be fun, interesting, and playful. So definitely use this as a base. Keep the potato, rice, and rice products. And start adding different seasonings and herbs that you like in it. And have and develop a flavor that you like. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.